So people get so much email these days that they don't really read their email messages anymore. They just scan them. In this video, we'll go over how to make your emails scannable so that they're easy on the eyes of your readers. We'll also discuss tactics that will help you highlight the most important information in your messages so that they pop out. So let's start with why make email scannable. And it's really just one main reason, and that is to make your readers focus on the stuff that matters in your messages. So if you think about it, a lot of people just glance over their text and their messages and try to discern whether any of the information is important or applies to them. And what you're doing here is just help guide them on the stuff that matters in those emails. And by the way, this applies to both short and long emails, not just the long ones. And in the next few slides, we'll go over three tips that will help you accomplish that. So tip number one is to use bullet points. So use bullet points for all your actions and questions. This will make them stand out and not get buried in paragraphs where they will absolutely be missed. And in cases when you use the three W's, for example, every action should be on a separate bullet point for easier readability. So let me give you an example of that. Here's an email to a team with a lot of blah, blah, blah as dummy text. But if you look closely, you'll notice that there are a few call to actions here and then here and another one here and each one with its own separate who, what, and when. But the problem here is that people who get this email will have to hunt and peck to find out what action applies to them and what doesn't. A better way of actually doing this is to list them at all in separate bullet points. So as you can tell, it looks a lot clearer here with James, Laura, and Susan. And for each separate bullet, we have a clear who, we have a clear what, and then we have a clear when, right? And this applies to all three bullet points that look nice and clean. And if Carla or, or James or Laura or Susan or whoever gets the email, quickly open it and they can immediately tell what applies to them and what doesn't. Another example is the use of questions in emails as well. So if you can tell here, there are a few questions. There's one there, there's another one here, and there's another one there with the question marks. And again, same thing applies where if you have an email with a lot of text in it, people who get the email need to figure out what questions apply to them and what don't. And a better way of doing that is to actually list them out separately as well as bullet points. And what happens here is it also actually makes it easier for your recipients to respond back to those questions and reply in line, which is something we're gonna be covering in a future tip. All right, the second tip is to use subheadings and white space. And you wanna use subheadings and white space to break up your text and help your words breathe because seeing a lot of text is very stressful on the eyes. And with subheadings, a couple of examples that we used previously are quick summary and details in the previous video, but you could also use others such as next steps, financials, actions, meeting attendees, or anything else that you think makes sense. And similarly with white space, you wanna break up long paragraphs and include more frequent line spaces within your text to help, again, your words breathe a little bit. So here's an example of an email that has just a lot of text in it without a lot of white space. And just for the sake of this video, I actually reduced it, but I'm sure you've received emails that are seven paragraphs long that just are endless in terms of the amount of words that are in them. And so this is definitely not what you want to do in your emails. And a better way of solving it is to actually break it up into se separate headings. So you can see quick summary here, next steps, meeting overview, additional information. And what happens is if someone opens the email, they can immediately go to whatever that section applies to them or not. So for example, James might want to look at next steps and figure out what happens there. And if you can notice, there's a lot of white space in between the, the different paragraphs, which helps a lot with the breathability as well. And it's much easier on the eyes. So this is definitely what you want to do with your emails going forward. The third tip is to use highlights and or bold text. And both highlighting and bolding help make important words or phrases stand out for your team. And they both work the same way, so the choice depends on your preference. But my advice is to use them both sparingly. You definitely don't want your email looking like a neon sign. And here are some things you can use highlights or bold text for. Important dates, especially deadlines, you want those to pop out. Names of team members so that their eyes can immediately go to where you want them to go. The word action and any other important information that you deem necessary. 
So here's an example of an email with some bolding and highlighting. As you can tell, again, the names of individuals, uh, any particular dates, that way they can gravitate to that. Uh, and then with this, for example, highlighted section, it kind of tells the team where you want to meet in the, in the hotel lobby at 7.30 a.m. and then leaving with the team to the client side by 7.45. So that sort of information that you definitely want your team to kind of look at, even if they're scanning through the email there. All right, and with that, a quick summary of the concepts we just learned. First, make your emails scannable so that they're easy on the eyes for your readers. The first step to accomplish that is to use bullet points. Tip number two is to use subheadings in white space. And tip number three is to use highlights and or bold text. Thanks so much for watching and on to the next video.